Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a very, very important, but rather simple idea in bond valuation, which is that of a bond's current yield and how it is related to its yield to maturity. To motivate this discussion, let's consider an example. Let's suppose that there is a bond that you buy today for a certain price. Call that price P0. Now in one year's time, you are going to receive some coupon payments from holding on to this bond. Denote that by the letter C, C for coupon, and the fact that they're going to come to you in one year. So C1, coupon payments in one year. The other thing that you can get from holding on to this bond is the price that you can sell it for at time period one. So let's call that P1. If somebody asks you, what is the total return that you're looking to make from holding on to this bond for one year? You can say, you know what? In one year's time, I'm going to receive some coupon payments, the price at which I can sell it for, subtract my initial investment of P0 as a fraction of the price that I pay today. This is the total return that I can make from holding on to this bond. And if you break this up, this can be written further as C1 over P0, which is basically your coupon payments as a fraction of the price that you pay today, and the change in price that you're expecting to occur as a fraction of the price that you pay today. This is the total return. It turns out that this portion of your total return, this is what we refer to as a bond's current yield. Current yield is nothing but the fraction of the total return that you're looking to make from a bond investment in the form of coupon payments. And the other thing that influences your return, your total return, is the percentage change in price that happens over the course of one year. Now, it turns out that if you buy the bond today at a certain price, which is P0, and that price is consistent with a certain yield to maturity, in other words, you're buying a bond today at a certain yield to maturity, and, and this is the important part, if that yield to maturity does not change over time, then it turns out that you can think of the total return that you can expect from holding on to this bond in one year as its yield to maturity. And the way that you are going to make that yield, this equation says that there's going to be two components to it. One is its current yield, which is how much you're going to make in the form of coupon payments. And the other is the percentage change in price. Now, I realize that this is a mouthful and rather conceptual at this stage, but don't worry, we're gonna change this and show this using an example. So let's do that. So suppose that there is a bond that pays a coupon rate of 10% and makes semi-annual coupon payments, right? So 5% every six months. And it has 20 years to maturity, so 40 six-month periods, and is presently trading at 1,197.93. So right off the bat, you can see that this bond is trading at a premium. And so this already tells you that the yield to maturity of this bond has to be less than the coupon rate, which is 10%. It has to be less than 10%. So now here are the questions. First, what is the current yield and the yield to maturity of this bond? Then the other important thing is that we want to figure out what will be the price of the bond in one year's time. And why are we interested in this? Because we need to understand what will be the percentage change in price in one year. Because that combined with the current yield and the yield to maturity will help us reflect on this equation that I showed you. Right? The current yield, the yield to maturity, and the percentage change in price. So let's go step by step. First, what is the current yield? Well, the price today is 1197.93. This is the price that you're paying today. And in one year, one year, which is two six-month periods, notice that the timeline is made out to 40, which is 46-month periods in 20 years. So in one year, the total coupon payments that you're going to receive are $100. And so the current yield is simply going to be $100, which you're going to receive over the course of one year. 
as a fraction of the price that you paid today, which is 1197.93. So the current yield is 8.35%. Now, the other thing that we are interested in is what is the yield to maturity? In other words, if you buy this bond today and then hold on to it till maturity, what is the total return that you make on an annual basis, which is basically the yield to maturity? Now, in a previous video, I have talked to you about how you can solve for the yield to maturity using this expression, where yield to maturity is essentially solving for this R. Turns out that this is rather easy to do in Excel. And so if I go and input all this information in Excel, the coupon rate, the face value, time to maturity, the number of coupon payments being made each year, the current bond price, we can use all that information to figure out the yield to maturity which, as it turns out, is going to be 8% based on this information, which, as you can see, is less than 10%, which is exactly what you would expect of a bond that is trading at a premium. And so what that means is that if you buy this bond and then hold on to it till its maturity, the total return on an annual basis that you're looking to make is 8%. Now, you might wonder, well, how is that possible because if I hold on to this bond for one year and only receive the coupon payments, then I'm going to get a return of 8.35%. So how is it that the total return that I'm making is less than that, which is 8%? Well, that is because in one year's time, your total return is not just a function of your current yield, but it also depends on the price that is going to be prevailing in one year's time. And if that price is going to be lower than 1197.93, then even though you may make 8.35% in coupon payments, but you might have to sell the bond at a lower price, taking a loss. And in fact, this is something that we can confirm. Specifically, if the bond's yield to maturity remains at 8%, and if I ask you, what is the price that you expect the bond to have in one year, then one year later, what's going to change? The coupon payments haven't changed. They're still 50. The face value hasn't changed. The underlying yield to maturity is still the same, and that's the assumption. That remains at 8%. But what has changed is the number of years to time to maturity. More specifically, now the bond is going to be maturing in 19 years, which is 38 six-month periods. And if somebody asks you, what is the price that you can expect the bond to have in one year, then the coupon payments are 50. The semi-annual yield is 4%, so 38 six-month time periods. And if you solve this, and this is something that you can do in Excel as well, the price that you will get is 1193.68. So in one year's time, as you can see, the price of the bond will be lower. And if you actually look at the percentage change in price, you take the price prevailing at time period one in relation to what you paid at the beginning of the year, which was 1197.93, the percentage drop is negative 0.35%. So what's the moral of the story? Well, if you buy a bond at a certain price today, you're essentially buying it at a certain yield, which in our example was 8%. And what we're saying is that the way you can think of making that 8% is in two ways. One is the current yield, which in our case was 8.35% over the one year time period. And secondly, is the percentage change in price, which in our case is negative 0.35%. For a premium bond, as long as the underlying yield to maturity remains constant at 8%, we will find that the price has to decrease over time. In fact, this is an exercise you can do in Excel as well. Let me show you. So this is the same Excel sheet in which I showed you how you can figure out the yield to maturity of this bond. And what I'm doing here, and for convenience purposes, I'm not going to go through the math of it, but all that I'm doing here is calculating the price of the bond that we can expect to prevail when one year has gone by so that there are 19 years to maturity and then 18 and then 17, and I'm figuring out the price. So notice this 1193.68. This is exactly the price that I showed you in, that will prevail in one year. 
The percentage change in price is negative 0.35%. The current yield is 8.35. If you sum the two up, it is exactly equal to, well, almost exactly equal to 8%, rounding error. As the time to maturity is going to decrease, notice that the price of the bond is continuously falling, 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 falling. In fact, when there are zero years to maturity, the bond will have to trade at exactly $1,000. So the main point is that for a premium bond, as long as the yield to maturity remains constant, the price of a premium bond will consistently fall over time so that the percentage change in price is always negative. For a discount bond, it's going to be the exact opposite. And so these are some rules of thumb that you might want to remember. As long as the yield to maturity does not change over time, for a premium bond, price will decrease over time, which means that the current yield has to be greater than the yield to maturity. For a discount bond, the exact opposite is true. The price will have to increase over time, which means that the current yield has to be less than the yield to maturity. And finally, for a bond that is trading at par at exactly 1,000, its price will remain at exactly 1,000 over time, which means that the current yield will be exactly equal to yield to maturity. In other words, for a bond that is trading at par, the entire yield comes from the coupon payments because the price of the bond doesn't change over time. It remains at $1,000. And so this then is how you can think of the relationship between a bond's current yield and its yield to maturity.